Hey everyone, it has been so good to see so many of you guys on Sunday mornings over the last several weeks and for us to be able to sing together, worship together, uh, and just be together. It has really just been, uh, been so good and I hope you have enjoyed it as well. Today I want to talk with you about something um, really important as we prepare for this weekend services and the Sundays ahead. When we restarted our in-person worship gatherings, we were vague about our recommendations to wear a face mask. We had hoped that we could all kind of figure it out on our own and there would be lots of mutual respect and understanding. And unfortunately, that has just resulted in a lot of lack of clarity and understanding and just even more confusion. And then we add to the reality that in the last few weeks, since we started restarted services, um, there, there has been this statewide mandate to wear face coverings in public places. And I just wanted to talk with you briefly today and offer some clarity that may be uncomfortable, um, but just so that we all can be on the same page. So starting this weekend, we are going to require that everyone who is in the church building wear a face covering unless you're in a room by yourself. Of course, if you have a respiratory condition um, that is under the exemption, you're not going to be required to wear a face covering. But for the rest of us, when you're here at the church, in the building, we are going to require that everyone wear a face covering. So why are we doing this? I'm not going to try to convince you or change your mind or your opinions and convictions. I want you to know that we have not taken this decision lightly nor are we just blindly following the, uh, the, lead, the lead of our elected officials. Our church board met last night and we had a long meeting in which we talked about this, discussed it. There was some disagreement because there is regularly disagreement when 12, 13 people come around the table and try to decide what is best. We talked about how this very well might be unconstitutional that this represents, um, and some of the other kind of mandates and restrictions do represent a sense of, of a loss of personal liberties. And, and those are valuable questions. Those are valid questions to ask. And this whole, the, the restrictions, they might be unconstitutional. We just feel like a church service isn't the place to fight that battle. Um, and that if you're really convicted about this and if, if you feel very passionate about this, we do encourage you to take the right course of action and to challenge the constitutionality of it. We just ask that when we gather as a church family that we stay focused on Jesus. You see, the, the big theological question that we ask through this is what does God want us to do? And what is the most God-honoring thing that we Jesus followers can do? And we wrestled with this one quite a bit. And a, and a good place to land, I think, as we ask the question, where do we draw the line of civil disobedience? If there is a gradual erosion of our rights in, in which there at some point becomes some kind of persecution against churches or Christians, where's the line? At what point do we disobey the law out of our desire to honor God? We wrestled through that one and we, we landed on this. In Acts chapter 5, we see the apostles preaching in the Jewish temple and they are for the second time arrested, brought before the Jewish authorities who tell them, didn't we tell you to stop telling people about Jesus? And Peter replied and he said, we must obey God rather than human authorities. That, that, of course, is, can be put up next to a couple of different places in the Bible that tell us to honor human authorities. And so as we wrestled with the question, here's, here's where we landed on. We're going to ask ourselves, are we being asked to disobey or to dishonor God? Are we being asked to disobey a clear directive and command from God? And at the point at which a human authority asks us or commands us or requires us to overtly disobey God, at that point, that makes civil disobedience permissible. And so with every issue, that is the question we're asking. And when we think about this issue of wearing face coverings, we would say, no, God doesn't forbid or tell us not to wear face coverings. And so wearing a face covering to worship is not disobeying a command of God, is not dishonoring God. And while it is 
inconvenient, while we don't like it, well, it does represent a loss of personal liberties. Um, since we're gathered in the name of Jesus, this isn't a restriction of worshiping Jesus, and it's reasonable to follow and cooperate with the authorities around us. If this is unsettling to you, I get it. I completely understand it. It's unsettling to me. I don't like it. I don't like the thought of wearing a mask. To help lead the way, we are expecting everybody to wear a face covering and to be a good example and set the example of leadership. I'll have a face covering on our services all the way through the services. Will it be hot? Yes. Will it be annoying? Yes. Will I be tempted to complain? Most likely. But here's what I believe. I love being together with our church family. And if this is the price that I have to pay to be with you all and to, for us to worship together, it is a small price to pay for the blessing and the benefit of being together as our church family. And so I hope that while it may take some time for you to digest some of this and you may not like it, you don't have to like it and we can grieve and we can lament together, but I really hope I'll see you this Sunday and on upcoming Sundays as let's continue to focus on Jesus. Even though it may be hard, even though it's a challenge, let's focus on Jesus together, let's worship Jesus together, and let's gather together in the name of Jesus as we continue to worship and seek him and make him proud. I hope to see you this weekend.